Hey Hershey Free, welcome to the online gathering of Hershey Free Church. My name is Dave Hyatt, and I'm glad you're worshiping with us here online today. If you choose to join us in person, we currently have our heritage service every first Sunday of the month at 8 a.m. and an outdoor service at 9 a.m. and our 1030 services in the sanctuary. Our mission as a church is to make disciples of Jesus who live with Jesus, love like Jesus, and lead others to do the same. If you're new with us today at Hershey Free, I encourage you to reach out to our guest care team. In the menu of our online platforms are links to our Sunday Bulletin, our Connect card, and we want to be an encouragement to you and answer any questions you might have about the church. As a special thank you to you, when you fill out a Connect card, we'll send you a small bag of Haitian Pearl coffee. It's 100%, 100% of the profits of that coffee go to support Haitian missionaries around the world. Thanks in advance for letting us know that you joined us here online and for being part of our ongoing partnership in the beautiful little country of Haiti. And just an update about Haiti. If you've been with us for a while, you know we've invested a lot of time and energy in Haiti. Uh, our partners there at Step Seminary uh, have recently uh, been with us. Haiti has experienced a tragedy. Their president or prime minister was uh, assassinated and things have uh, really, really gotten stressful. However, all of our friends, all of our partners there are currently safe. The country is relatively calm, but we do ask you to pray. Pray for peace, pray for hope, and uh, continue to invest in the ministry in Haiti and Global Fingerprints, which we'll talk more about in a couple months. I also encourage you to check out our Sunday Bulletin uh, in the menu of our online platform on hfcinfo.com. There you can take your own ser sermon notes, you can give financially, and read the latest announcements. Uh, this coming Friday, we are having an overnight outdoor camp out right here at Hershey Free in the back. There will be singing around the campfire, storytelling, s'mores, a big breakfast in the morning. You can come just for the fire and hot dogs and singing, or you can come, bring your own tent, spend the night, even bring an RV. We do have tents that you can borrow, so let us know if you want to borrow one of those. You can sign up for that at hfcinfo.com. Lastly, thanks for giving to the ministry of Hershey Free. As a reminder, you can give online at hfcinfo.com. And again, thanks for being with us today. Hey church, I'm Nick Schatz, the executive pastor here at Hershey Free. During the last couple of weeks, I've been updating you on our church's financial help. So giving has been down ever since the pandemic. And we have cash reserves still, and we haven't dipped into our emergency reserves yet. So we aren't alarmed, but we are taking notice. So I introduced you to the 1% step. The 1% step is a challenge for you to either begin giving 1% of your income to the ministry of Hershey Free, or if you already support the church, to raise your regular giving by 1%. That's one extra penny for every dollar that you earn to support the church. Now, some of you may be wondering, why are you asking for a percentage of my income? I mean, why should I give based on how much money I earn? Well, first, the Bible shows us a pattern of percentage giving. For instance, Proverbs 3, 9 reads, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops. Our forefathers in the faith uh, gave God what was first and best of their earnings. And they were accustomed to giving a tenth or 10% of their income to His work, along with you know, sacrifices and religious offerings over the amount. Now, we no longer live under the obligations of the Old Testament law anymore, but this idea of percentage giving continues in the New Testament. The earliest followers of Jesus kept up this habit by giving based on a percentage of how much they earned. 1 Corinthians 16.2 reads this way, On the first day of every week, each of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income. So we teach and encourage percentage giving here at Hershey Free Church because it's healthy for our own discipleship to give regularly and generously based on a portion of our earnings. But what if I'm bad at math, you might say? Or, you know, one extra penny for every dollar seems easy enough, but, but I'm still not sure how to decide how much I should give when I get my paycheck. So to make this a little easier, we've put together some tools for you to use. If you go to hfcinfo.com, and click on the 1% step tab, there you will find a couple of helpful charts to help you determine what 1% will look like for you. Hey, thanks for watching, and thank you for embracing these transparent conversations we are having as a church family. The year 2022 and beyond will likely look different for our church, and people like you are the key to helping our elder team discern next steps. Good morning, Hershey Free Church. We're so glad that you joined us this morning to worship our Savior. 
Let's just give him all the honor and the glory and the praise together this morning. Psalm 57, we read, My heart, O God, is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake, my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. What we sing and speak out loud, our soul hears. So let's continue to remind ourselves and each other about how wonderful God is. Uh, one. 
once was lost, I walked away. The road was dark, I could not see. My hope was gone, the pain was real, but your mercy saw my steps. Felt my fears, you heard my cries, you caught my tears. I'm open wide, you ran to me with your mercy. King, I bow my heart to sing. You save me, you raise me, you died so I could live. No greater love than this, your mercy. You gave me life beyond the grave, my deepest shame. Cast away, you sing a song, it covers me, it's your mercy. to repentance Your loving kindness leads me to repentance Lord let your kindness lead us to repentance Lord, let your kindness lead us to repentance. Your mercy, your mercy, I stand before my King. I bow my heart to sing you say. To sing, you save me, you raise me, you died so I could live. No greater love than this, your mercy. and pray, find in me thine all in all, cause Jesus prayed it all, all to him I owe, sin I left a crimson stain, he washed it white 
Good morning. My name is Bob Karwalski. I'm the music and creative arts pastor here at the Hershey Free Church. We are so glad that you're joining us this morning. Um, It is a joy and a privilege to be able to do this. I asked George if I could be a part of uh, the preaching team again um, after a little hiatus. And I do think it's funny that of all of the sermons um, since the time I asked him, um, that he picked for me to do the living well on the physical body. And I guess it's because you have to put your best foot forward. So out of all the pastors, he picked the best looking one. Um, I can't say that with a straight face. So you know, I'm truly, I'm joking. Um, Even as I said it, it felt bad coming out of my mouth. But uh, this morning, we are going to continue the Living Well series and on the physical body. And uh, as we go through this morning, what I want us to do is think about our habits. We're going to talk about the bad habits and good habits, but think of our habits as like a coat. You're putting some on. When we put some on over the, the pandemic and the season of COVID, um, and what are some of the ones that we need to take off, and what are some good ones that we need to put on? So with that in mind, we uh, did a survey and asked y'all, like, what were some of the habits that you found that w- were unhealthy that you put on during the season? 
And uh, the responses we got back were uh, too much Netflix, um, maybe binge watching a show or even re-binge watching a show. I might have done that. Uh, staying on the couch and not exercising. Eating poorly. Neglecting regular medical checkups. Sleep deprivation. Um, probably happened when we were re-binge watching shows. At least I'm speaking for myself. And um, another one, my personal one, um, this wasn't in the survey, but uh, our addiction to our phones. Uh, like Netflix and other social uh, or streaming devices, you know, social media, it, it's just so easy to stay online. And then before you know it, you're like, oh, what did I do with my day? And it's important to note, like, this might not seem like a big deal. Um, as Christians, we focus on our spiritual growth, but our bodies, how do we view our bodies? So the questions I want to go through this morning are, are our bodies important and how do we view them? And are they important to God? How does he view our bodies? So before we begin, let's just go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, it is a privilege and an honor to open up your word together. You have designed us to be in community and in relationship with one another, but not just that, but with you. And God, you are so great and so mighty, and you give us instructions on how to live and to live well. I pray this morning that you would be, God, confronting our hearts and our minds, be confronting us with your truth. God, we need, we need it. So guide our hearts and our minds to receive your instructions well because they're going to look different for each and every one of us. And I pray that in all of this, you would be glorified. We thank you, we love you, and we praise you. And pray these things in your name. Amen. So I'd like to go through the second two questions first. How does God view our bodies? And are our bodies important to God? Genesis chapter 1, starting in verse 26, reads, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. And then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and the, every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all of the birds in the sky and all of the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has breath, has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. So it was so. God saw all that he had made and it was very good. First, I'm always struck that God spoke things into being. Like, with his command, something was created. God made man in his own image and put him in, in charge of everything he created. And after that, he put the exclamation point on it that it was very good. Let that sink in. You may have been given a purpose, or not may, you have been given a purpose and a way of revealing God's image and character to those around you. Your body is a way to show others who God is and what he desires. Psalm 139, verse 13 for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Fearfully and wonderfully made. 
or the lines. One commentator describes this as the wonderfulness of the human mechanism is so great that if realized, it produces a sensation of fear. And I thought, as I've read this, it's kind of like when my wife was pregnant with our second child and she needed to have a C-section. And the doctors asked me if I wanted to be on the other side of the curtain to watch. And my response was like, nope. Because most likely all of the medical staff would have two people to take care of. It's that sensation of fear. So this begs the question, does God care about our bodies? I think the answer is yes. God is pro-body. These verses tell us that God was intimately involved in the details of creating the intricacies of your physical body. We are matters, we are, what we are matters to God. It's significant that he chose to give us a body. And what matters even more is that the psalmist said that what God created is wonderful. Do you see yourself in that way? So, let's go back to the first set of questions. How do we view our bodies? And how do we end up with bad habits? In the book of Romans, Paul informs us of of our dilemma. If we didn't already know, or were not aware, in the opening chapters, Paul presents salvation by faith through Christ and justification. And then in chapter 6, through 11, Paul talks about sanctification, to be set apart as holy. And Paul is not just talking about our bodies in the spiritual sense, but our physical bodies. Romans chapter 8, verse 6, the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the body, or, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Simply put, our bodies, if left unchecked, will become their own center of the universe. They will become our own idol, our own God. But more specifically, our bodies have desires. Romans 6, verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. If our physical desires are not kept in check or governed by Christ, they can run rampant. John Mark Comer, in his book, says we have to be satisfied. We would have to experience everything and everybody and be experienced by everything and everybody to feel satisfied, to complete desire. We'd have to eat at every restaurant, travel to every country, every city, every exotic locale, experience every natural wonder, make love to every partner we could possibly desire, and win every award, etc. Like you could keep going on. We would have to experience it all to ever really feel. Our desires, they can be infinite because our bodies were designed by a God who is infinite. So let me explain this in another way too. Sometimes, for most of us, when you fall down in public, what's probably the first thing that you do? You look around to see if anybody saw you. That is if you didn't um, knock yourself out in a concussion. But we are so aware of who we are. Um, For me personally, I uh, don't refuse to dance. I just really don't like the dance because I'm so afraid of what I look like. Like, my hips don't lie, as the song references. Um... But the reality is, is I miss out on a lot of experiences with my wife because she loves to dance. So maybe someday I'll take dancing lessons. But So this is where the tension of the story comes into play. If God created our bodies, wonderful, how do we fight 
the body's desire. This is why it is so important that Christ came in the flesh, a real human body, so that he would be able to rescue our physical bodies. Our God did not just create us and leave us. He provided us with a new life. The reality of the resurrection means that my body matters. I am designed to engage God in my body. 1 Corinthians 6.19 reads, Do you not know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor your God with your bodies. As a part of creation, as a part of creation, our bodies are for his glory. So now, I want to move on from the question, how important are our bodies? Like, what is the importance? Two, are we ready to use them? And use them for what? First, um, or 2 Timothy 2, 21 and Titus 3, 1 say that we are to be ready for every good work. That we, were, we should be ready to live out the gospel. That we should be ready to be the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Now, with all of that said, there are two things that I want us to be careful of. In light of the biblical framework, we need to avoid idolizing our bodies. And we need to avoid abusing or neglecting our bodies. Also, I want to throw out this preference, uh, preface. Sorry. Our ultimate goal with our body is to further the kingdom of heaven, to live out the gospel. But we all have different levels of capacity to do so. So for the eight-year-old watching this, your capacity is different than the 70-year-old seven year retiree. For those who are watching who have a medical condition, like being diagnosed with cancer and undergoing chemotherapy, your capacity to live out the gospel is very different. And for those who have been all of their life or are more recently physically impaired, your capacity to live out the kingdom is very different. In any case, we want you to know that we are with you in this journey. And we want to help in any of the ways that we can. But regardless of our individual capacities, we are all called to fully live out the gospel. So what are some of the habits that will help us move forward in a healthy way? Well, going off of our questionnaire, one of the things you could do to avoid binge watching TV is setting up a schedule at home. When you work, if you are working from home, when you have family time, when you read and how much TV you watch. Watching TV isn't the problem. It's how we let ourselves watch too much TV. I, I heard this statistic and it, it was humbling. And so sorry if this is uh, a, uh, a little bit of a guilt trip, but if you've watched the whole season of The Office, you could have read the Bible in the same amount of time. Each take about 80 hours or so. So, how do we eliminate that or, or just reduce that? It, setting up a schedule is one of the ways that will help. Home workouts. If you want to get up off the couch, sometimes we just have the idea that we have to go to the gym to work out. I can tell you from personal experience, I've started working out at home um, to videos. And you can get them on Amazon Prime, you can get them on um, different services, but uh, which ironic is because I'm trying to reduce the amount of time we watch TV or Netflix and so forth, but you can find workouts online. And it kind of feels like a little bit of Richard Simmons, you know, minus the, the tights, but I can honestly say of all of my years of like working out and then doing workouts at home, my body just feels good. I work out about four times a week, 30 minutes, doesn't take long. Um, but it's really convenient because it's right down in the basement. 
eating well, finding a way to um, eat well is not too hard anymore. Uh, you can look up different recipes online. The, the great thing about all of these um, diets like Whole30 and so forth to come out, and I'm not suggesting you do a diet, but um, people have, be have gotten so creative with recipes. So now things that don't have sugar in them actually taste good. So if you want to pick up a new hobby in this time, pick up the hobby of cooking. It's something you have to do every day. Well, not necessarily have to. You have to get food every day. Um, get rest. So in Genesis chapter 1, the God who created everything instilled in a rhythm to rest. On the seventh day, he created everything. And then he blessed it, which I think is so important to, to notice. Because in all of the things he created, he blessed every living creature that they would be fruitful and multiply. He blessed mankind that they would be fruitful and multiply. And then he blessed the seventh day because it can be fruitful and multiply. If we get rests, our bodies will live longer. There's a study done. You can gain up to 10 years on your life if you have good rest habits. And lastly, you can set restrictions on your phone from social media. I have a, a timer on my Instagram. It's the only social media that I have so that it reminds me when I've spent 20 minutes on Instagram and then I shut it off. And that doesn't all happen like in one setting. It's for the whole day. So if I've been on for 20 minutes, I don't go back on. And I'd like to keep reducing that number. So of all of these things, you know that the the music pastor can't just stop here. I want to look at what does the Bible say about our posture in worship. Worship is very active, and it's not just singing. Psalm 66, verse 1. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. The word shout here means a waterfall or a cascade of sound, splitting the ears in a war cry. Why would we have that? Well, because like we've seen, we, if we have Jesus, we've won. Psalm 95 verse 1 is similar. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Shout here is to vocalize like thunder. Psalm 47, verse 1. Clap your hands, all you nations. Shout to God with cries of joy. The word clap here, first of all, all peoples, so it's not just generational. But the word clap is like rel relative to the, the, the blast of a trumpet. That is the sound that the clap should make. Psalm 32, verse 11. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. The word rejoice, to have the maximum capacity for joy, of joy. It's not based on our circumstances. In the valley or on the hilltop, mountaintop. It's not based on our circumstances. It is based on our God. Psalm 149, verse 3. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with timbrel and harp. The word here, dance, includes physical movements. It's a joyful trembling. The opposite of the word in Hebrew is to writhe in pain. Like, so think of stubbing your toe, but in the positive sense is the word for dance. And lastly, Psalm 143, verse 6, spread out my hands to you. I spread out my hands to you. I thirst for you like a parched land. The raising of hands is to spread out or to stretch over. Now, like before, I want to throw out this preference. All of our, bo our bodies all have a different capacity. So this will look different from person to person, like dancing. But I want you to hear my heart. 
My goal for this isn't that I raise the charismatic level of our church. We're not trying to be a charismatic church. My goal isn't that we look cool or become the trendy church so that we can post pictures of us on Instagram or social media. These instructions, if looked at in an isolated way, will seem awkward because this is clearly from God to us and how he wants to be worshiped. But like David's wife, when she was outside of the experience, she looked at David and said, you look like a fool when David was dancing. So if all we do is see these as instructions for when we gather on a Sunday morning, it's awkward. But it's not awkward when we realize that we're not, again, we're not singing about God. We're singing to God. And we're singing to God who is in the room with us. Let that sink in for a second. Colossians 3.16, that the word of Christ will dwell amongst you richly through the teaching of and singing. It literally means that the presence of Christ would be there. And so my challenge to you this morning is how we view our bodies. Because our bodies are to be living sacrifices, as Paul later says in Romans. Our bodies are, we, our whole life is to be a life that worships. And so how do we treat our bodies well, both in every aspect? And then how do we treat our bodies towards God when we come here to gather together? And so I'm going to give you the opportunity to respond in worship this morning. So as we continue in worship this morning, we posture our, our bodies in worship to God who is in the room with us. Not too long ago, it seemed like the spirit was moving in the, in, the, in the music industry a little bit because songs started coming out that talking about weapon and, and how we fight our battles. The song we're going to sing is called Weapon. And it just illustrates and, and gives us words to that line of communication that we have with God. Through prayer, through song, we can always go to him in the darkest time, whatever the case may be in the valleys, and at the mountaintops. We can always go to our God. Be mindful of that as we sing and as, as, as you learn these words, join along with us in worshiping our God. Barely hanging on by a thread of hope, hard to see beyond everything I know. With your strength, I'll stand. It's all I can do. I will lift my hands and see my way through. So when I'm broken and my weak in my darkest hour I'll let my worship be a weapon on this battleground and from the depths of the lowest place I will give you the highest praise the highest praise I am hanging on to every word Lord, you never left. Lord, you never changed. All my confidence is in Jesus' name. Oh, so when I'm broken at my weakest in my darkest hour, I'll let my worship be a weapon on this battleground. From the depths of the 
lowest place I will give you the highest praise the highest praise is the cross put
And as Paul says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Thank you for joining us this week. May you be blessed, and we will see you next week. Amen.